Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to learn to solve the numerical problems related with the lenses. And for that, first of all, we need to understand the Cartesian sign rules. These rules will tell us the signs for various physical quantities that will be used for solving these problems. Now, the first rule is that this principal axis should always lie along the x-axis and the origin will be the optical center of the lens. So, for the convex lens, this will be the origin and for concave lens, this will be the origin. And we need to measure all the distances from the origin, which is the optical center. Object will always be placed on the left side of the lens, which means that incident rays will start from the left side and they will move towards the right side. And any distance which is measured against the direction of the incident rays will be negative and which are measured in the direction of the incident rays will be positive. Because we are measuring all the distances from the optical center, so any distance towards the left of the optical center will be negative, towards the right of the optical center will be positive. And if we are measuring the heights, height above the principal axis or height below the principal axis, then above it will be positive and below the principal axis it will be considered negative. We will now see the sign conventions for lenses and first for a convex lens. We remember that for a convex lens we have drawn six different diagrams by keeping the object at different positions. If the object is between infinity and the first principal focus this type of image is formed which has similar nature for all the five cases and it is real and inverted. But for the sixth position, when the object is between optical center and the first principal focus, a different type of image with different nature is formed. So we'll be discussing these two conditions separately. So let's first discuss the sign conventions for this kind of image. Now here, object is towards the left side, so U will be negative. Image is towards the right side of the lens, it will be positive. Height of object above the principal axis, it is positive. Height of image is below the principal axis, so it will be negative. Now for the focal length. We know that for a lens, there are two focal lengths, first and second focal lengths. Now which one to take for sign? Now remember, whether it is a mirror or it is a lens, we take the focal length when the object is at infinity. So if the object is at infinity, after reflection or after refraction, wherever the rays meet or appear to meet, that will be considered as the principal focus and accordingly we will calculate the focal length. So for a convex lens, if the rays are parallel to the principal axis coming from infinity, they will always meet at this point. So its principal focus will be towards the right side. As a result, we will take it as positive. Now magnification sign will be negative because it is real and inverted image and power is positive. Sign of power will be same as the sign of focal length. So this is for the first condition. Now we will take this type of image. Here object is again on the left side because it has to be on the left always. So it will be negative. Image is also on the left side of the lens. So it will also be negative. Height of object is always positive above the principal axis. Height of image in this case is again positive because it is above the principal axis. Focal length will remain same, so it, is, it will be positive. Because it is erect image, so magnification here is positive and sign of power will be same as sign of focal length. It also remains positive. For a concave lens, the nature of image remains same wherever we place the object. Therefore, U, that is object distance, will be negative as it is on the left side image distance it is also negative because it is also on the left side height of the object is positive above the principal axis height of image is also positive because it is also above the principal axis now focal length will be negative because the ray which is parallel to the principal axis after refraction will diverge but appear to come from this side so this distance will be the focal length which is on the left side so it will be negative Magnification will be positive because it is virtual and erect image and as focal length is negative, therefore power will also be negative. For solving the numerical problems on lenses, we will be using this lens formula and it gives us the relationship between the 
image distance, object distance and the focal length of the lens. If we know any two of these things, we can easily find the third one. So the formula is 1 upon f is equal to 1 upon v minus 1 upon u. If we compare it with the mirror formula, you remember it was 1 upon v plus 1 upon u. So you have to learn very thoroughly the difference between the mirror and the lens formula. Another formula which we will be using will be of linear magnification. And we know that linear magnification tells us the size of image as compared to the size of the object. And it can be found by calculating the ratio of height of image to height of object. So m will be equal to h2 upon h1 and it is also equal to v upon u. And this formula can be used in three different ways. m is equal to h2 upon h1, it is also equal to v upon u. Because these two are equal to m, so they are equal to one another also. This formula can be used in three different ways. Now we will understand linear magnification for a convex lens and we have drawn six diagrams for different positions of object and out of those I have drawn four here for the reference. First diagram this is the object and this is the image and we can easily see that image is smaller than the object which means that h2 is lesser than h1 and if we calculate the ratio h2 upon h1 it will always be less than 1. So magnification is less than 1 but because the image is inverted so we will put minus sign here and we will say that m is lesser than minus 1. Now we will see this situation where the object is at 2f1 and image is at formed at 2f2 and size of object and image is same here. h2 upon h1 will be equal to 1 because they are equal but image is inverted Therefore, we will say m is equal to minus 1. Now the third situation, here image, this is the image and in this diagram, this is the image and we can see in both the cases, image is enlarged. Means in both the cases, h2 is greater than h1. If h2 will be greater than h1, it means m will also be greater than 1. But for this first case, it is inverted image. So we will say m is greater than minus 1. Minus sign means inverted image. Here image is erect and we will say m is greater than plus 1 and plus sign means erect image. For the concave lens only one kind of image is formed which has same nature. So here image is always smaller than the object means h2 is always lesser than h1. Therefore m will always be less than 1. But because image is erect, so we will say that m is less than plus 1. And plus sign here means that it is virtual and erect image. We have learned the basics and now we are ready to solve a few problems based on the lenses. We have just two formulas to solve these problems. One is the linear magnification formula which is 3 in 1 formula. And second is the lens formula. So it is not going to be very difficult to identify which formula we need to use. But most important than that is applying correct sign conventions. My suggestion to you is to make a chart of these sign conventions and place it in front of you initially when you solve the numerical problems and later you will get a hang of it. Now the technique to solve the problems is read the statement at least 2-3 times. And when you are reading the statement, you need to highlight the keywords and most important is to notice the optical device that is given in the problem, whether it is a mirror or a lens and if it is a lens, whether it is a concave or a convex lens. Missing on this part can get you the wrong results. So let's see the keywords here. An object of 7 cm height means height of object is given is placed at a distance of 12 cm object distance is given from a convex lens of focal length 8 cm so here convex lens is given so its focal length will be positive so three things u is minus 12 because object distance is always negative height of object is always positive so it is plus 7 because it is a convex lens focal length will be plus 8 cm we need to find three quantities here position of the image, 
position of image will be v nature can be found from m or the magnification and height of image will be found from h2 so these three quantities we are going to find now first of all for finding the position of the image we will be using lens formula f and u are provided so we will insert the values along with their signs and we will find out v which will be plus 24 cm for nature we will use this formula and insert the value of v that we just calculated and u is given minus 12 so our answer will be minus 2 negative sign of magnification tells us the nature of the image which will be real and inverted to find height of image again we'll use this formula m we have just calculated h1 is given so h2 will be minus 14 centimeter height of image is 14 height of object was 7 so we can easily see that it is a magnified image let's see another problem read the statement and highlight the keywords by pausing the video a 2 cm long pin is placed perpendicular to the principal axis here pin is the object and its length is 2 cm means it is the height of our object a convex lens of focal length 12 cm so again lens is convex so focal length will be plus 12 the distance of pin means object from lens is 15 cm object distance u is given which will be minus 15 find the size of the image h2 we need to find for finding h2 we can use this formula h1 is given u is given but v is not there so first we need to calculate v by using lens formula f is provided u is also provided insert the value of f which is 12 u which is minus 15 this negative and this negative sign will turn positive then we can find v from here which will be 60 centimeter insert the value of v u and h1 to find out h2 which will be minus 8 centimeter here also h1 was 2 h2 is 8 so it is also a magnified image read the statement and highlight the keywords by pausing the video and try to solve this numerical so our keywords here are a concave lens has focal length 20 cm because it is a concave lens so focal length will be 20 at what distance from the lens a tall object be placed means we need to find u and the height of the object is given 5 cm tall object means it is the height of the object which will be h1 and h1 is always positive so that it forms an image 15 cm from the lens now this is the tricky part if you get this part right your answer will be obviously right then now it says that image is 15 cm from the lens but we need to know whether it is negative or positive so you need to remember here that in a concave lens always the image is formed on the left side of the lens never on the right so it will always be negative so v here will be minus 15 cm now we need to find two things distance of object u and size of image that is h2 so first we will use lens formula because f is given v is also given u can be easily found while inserting the values of f and v which are both negative we need to take care that we insert it along with their signs so our u comes out to be minus 60 centimeter remember u should always be negative if your u comes to be positive then you must know that there is something wrong next is the size of the image that is h2 so using this formula v u h1 all are known so we can easily find out h2 now in the case of these numericals there are just two formulas that can be used so that is not a problem only thing that you need to keep in mind is using the sign conventions properly here you can notice one more thing h2 is 1.25 while h1 is 5 cm so we know that height of image is lesser means it is a diminished image a lens of focal length 20 cm is used to produce a 10 times magnified image 
of a film slide on a screen. How far must the slide be placed from the lens? So let's see which are the keywords here. A lens of focal length 20 cm is given. Magnification is given which is 10. Image of a film slide. So film slide here is our object and the image is formed on a screen. This is the biggest clue for us that image is formed on a screen. Now we know that in a concave lens always virtual image is formed which cannot be formed on the screen. So the lens provided here is a convex lens. How far must the slide be placed from the lens means we need to find out u. Because it is a convex lens so our f is positive. Magnification will be negative because image formed on a screen will always be inverted. So magnification is minus 10 and we need to find out u. We have two formulas. Formula for magnification and the lens formula. In both the formulas we see that v and u are the unknown quantities. Means out of three, two quantities are unknown. So we cannot calculate any one of these. As we did in case of mirrors, here we will find one quantity in terms of other means we find the value of v in terms of u inserting the value of m we will find v which will be equal to minus 10 u then this value of v will be inserted in the lens formula here along with its sign and then we will calculate u from here which will be minus 22 centimeter read the statement of this problem very carefully and try to understand it an object placed on a meter scale at 8 cm mark was focused on a white screen placed at 92 cm mark using converging lens placed on scale at 50 cm mark. Find the focal length of the lens, position of image if it is shifted at 29 cm and nature of image if the object is further shifted. To understand this problem, first figure, draw a figure. It will make the things easier. So we need to take a meter scale which has the readings from 0 to 100 centimeter. On this meter scale at 8 centimeter mark our object is placed. At 92 centimeter mark our screen is placed and at 15 centimeter mark a converging lens which is a convex lens is placed and we know that 50 centimeter mark will be exactly in the center. We know the position of the object lens and screen so we can find distance of object and distance of image from the lens. So our distance of object will be 50 minus 8 which will be 42. So u will be minus 42 centimeter and distance of image will be 92 minus 50. So it will be 42 centimeter because image distance is distance of image from the optical center. So this distance is 42. So now we know u minus 42 v plus 42 centimeter and using the lens formula we can find out the focal length it will be 21 centimeter so now we know the focal length of this lens and answer for the first part b part now find the position of image if it is shifted at 29 centimeter mark means object which was earlier at 8 centimeter mark now it is shifted to 29 centimeter mark if object is somewhere here at 29 centimeter mark now u or the object distance will change. It will be 50 minus 29 and 50 minus 29 is equal to 21. So our object distance now is minus 21 centimeter. Notice that focal length which we calculated earlier is also 21 centimeter which means that our object is placed at the principal focus. Now we will insert the value of f and u in the lens formula and find out v which will be 1 upon 0 and 1 upon 0 is equal to infinity. Otherwise also we know that if the object is at principal focus then image will be formed at infinity. Now we come to C part. Find the nature of image if object is further shifted towards the lens. We know that object is placed at the principal focus already and if we further shift it its position now will be between the optical center and first principal focus and in this case image formed will be virtual and erect. So this is the answer for the third part that virtual and erect image will be formed. This is our next problem which looks quite lengthy but it is a very simple problem. Read the statement by pausing the video. Let's find the keywords here. 
the image of a candle flame formed by lens is obtained on a screen so this word suggests two things for this question number one it has to be a convex lens because in a concave lens image is never formed on a screen number two if it is formed on a screen it will be real and inverted so number one we have found out that it is a convex lens number two magnification which is three will be negative because inverted image now the distance between the lens and image which will be v and you have to remember that in a convex lens when real and inverted image is formed it is always on the right side of the lens so sign of v will be positive we need to find two things what distance uh, the candle should be placed means u and nature of image nature of image we can easily find from magnification sign so our magnification is minus 3 v is plus 80 and u we need to find using this simple formula we can find out u and it will be minus 26.66 centimeter now nature of image will be real and inverted that can be found from the sign of the magnification minus sign depicts that it is real and inverted image calculate the focal length of a convex lens that produces a virtual image at a distance of 50 centimeter of an object placed 20 centimeter in front of it now this problem is very simple provided we understand the clue that is given here now let's highlight the keywords calculate the focal length of a convex lens so this is first keyword which produces a virtual image if you miss this part then your question is likely to go wrong now we understand that in a convex lens virtual image is formed only in one case and whenever virtual image is formed it is always towards the left side of the lens it means that distance of image will be minus 50 here so u is given which is minus 20 v will be minus 50 centimeter if you get this uh, sign or the sign convention right then your numerical will also be correct focal length can be easily found using the lens formula and it will be 33.3 centimeter a material of refractive index n2 and it is kept in a medium of refractive index n1 a parallel beam of light is incident on the lens complete the path of rays of light emerging from convex as well as concave lens if there are now these three situations so you need to read this question once again and draw the diagram so let's see this answer for the convex lens first of all now in this case they have said that we have a lens which has refractive index n2 and it is kept in a medium with refractive index n1 now there we have three different situations first is when refractive index of the medium is lesser than that of lens then it is equal and then it is greater so under these three conditions how the parallel rays will get refracted we need to find out now the first condition is exactly the same as we keep a lens made up of glass in air where glass has higher refractive index and air has lesser refractive index in that case rays converge at a point now let's understand this with the help of the rules of refraction now if we draw a normal at this circular surface of the lens by joining this point with the center of curvature we know so the parallel beam of rays after refraction instead of going straight they will bend away from the normal because they are moving from a denser to a rarer medium so rays instead of going parallel will bend away from the normal this ray also will bend away from the normal and they will appear to converge at a point in the second situation because the refractive index of the lens and the medium is same so there will be no refraction rays will pass straight without any deviation third situation is a little different situation now in this case refractive index of the lens is lesser which means it is a rarer medium so now refracted rays will pass from a rarer to a denser medium and we know they have to bend towards the normal so if this is the normal the parallel rays instead of going straight bend towards the normal so this parallel ray will also bend towards the normal so on the whole the rays will appear to diverge in this situation 
for the concave lens also n2 is the refractive index of the lens while n1 is the refractive index of the surrounding medium now in first situation n2 is greater means the medium of the lens is denser medium and surroundings is the rarer medium light rays are coming out from denser to rarer medium so they will bend away from the normal so instead of going straight they bend away from the normal so this is the normal situation when we place a concave lens in air in the second situation the refractive index of lens and surrounding medium is same so there is no refraction they will pass straight without bending and again the third situation is little different where refractive index of lens is lesser means it is a rarer medium and surrounding medium is denser so rays are coming from rarer to denser medium so they need to bend towards the normal so instead of going straight the rays bend towards the normal as a result they appear to be converging in this case a convex lens is a converging lens while a concave lens is a diverging lens and depending upon their ability to converge or diverge the rays of light we find the power of these lenses so power of a lens can be defined as reciprocal of its focal length in meters and its formula will be p is equal to 1 upon f in meter but if focal length is in centimeter then the formula becomes 100 upon f in centimeters we will find the inverse relationship between power and focal length with the help of these diagrams so let's consider these three convex lenses a parallel beam of light is passing through all the three lenses and it is converging at a point now notice in all the three cases it is converging very close to the lens a little away from the lens and it is farther away from the lens means in all the three cases focal length is different smallest focal length little larger and it is the largest focal length now we will focus on the degree of the convergence so here this ray if it goes straight it, it this will be the path but it has bend after refraction to this extent so this is the degree of the convergence now if we see this last one degree of convergence is very less so we can relate now degree of convergence is maximum but focal length is minimum here degree of convergence is minimum but focal length is maximum so this is the inverse relationship between the power and the focal length of a lens same can be explained using this concave lens in this also parallel rays of light are passing through the lens and after refraction it diverges now this would have been the straight path but after refraction it has diverged to this extent or this is the degree of divergence in this case divergence is lesser and in this case divergence is minimum so we can find or relate the degree of divergence with the focal length maximum degree of divergence but minimum focal length minimum divergence but maximum focal length so we infer that there is inverse relationship between power and focal length of a lens power is measured in the standard international unit called as diopter and we can define one diopter using this formula only so one diopter is the power of a lens whose focal length is 1 meter if we place two or more lenses in contact with one another then their combined power can be calculated using this formula which will be the sum of the powers of the individual lenses let's understand this with the help of an example a convex lens of power 5 diopters is placed in contact with a concave lens of power 2 diopters their combined power will be p1 plus p2 now p1 is plus 5 because it is a concave, convex lens and p2 will be minus 2d because it is a concave lens if we calculate it will come out plus 3 diopters now this suggests that the combination of these two lenses will behave as a convex lens and if the rays are passing or the parallel rays are passing through this combination they will converge at a point because it is behaving as a convex lens so let's solve a few problems and understand it better 
A convex lens of power 3 diopters is held in contact with a concave lens of power minus 1 diopter. So first we will see this much. Now power of the first lens is 3 and second is minus 1 and their combined power will be equal to plus 2 diopters. So we understand here that it will behave as a, the combination will behave as a convex lens. Now a parallel beam of light is made to fall on the combination. We know that in a convex lens if a parallel beam of light is passing it will converge at one point. So we have to find that one point. At what distance from the combination will the beam get focused? So we have to find out the focal length and we have this formula power is equal to 1 upon f in meters. So using that formula f will be equal to 1 upon p if f is in meter but we want focal length in centimeter so our formula becomes 100 upon p. Putting the value of p the answer will be 50 centimeter. So this is our answer. A convergent lens of power 8 diopters is combined with the divergent lens of power 10 diopters. Calculate the focal length of the combination. A convergent lens is a convex lens so power will be plus 8. Divergent lens is a concave lens so power will be minus 10. And combined power will be the sum of the individual powers. So we'll using this formula 8 plus minus 10 our answer will be minus 2 diopters. So it means that the combination is behaving as a concave lens. Calculate the focal length of the combination. Now we'll use this formula P is equal to 1 upon F in meters. So F will be equal to 1 upon P but in that case F will be in meters and we want focal length in centimeters so we'll multiply it with 100 and our formula will be F is equal to 100 upon P and our answer will be minus 50 centimeters. So let's solve this problem ourselves by pausing the video. A convex lens of focal length 40 cm is placed in contact with a concave lens of focal length 25 cm what is the power of the combination. Notice one very important thing here focal lengths are given and combined focal length is not the sum of the individual focal lengths. So now first focal length is 40 because it is a convex lens second is minus 25 because it is a concave lens. First we will find their powers. So power of the first lens will be 2.5 diopters. Power of the second lens will be minus 4 diopters. Then we will combine their powers. So 2.5 plus minus 4 combined power of the combination will be minus 1.5 diopters. With this we have completed reflection and refraction in detail and I hope you have understood it. Thank you for watching.